Hello, and welcome to the third video in the Getting Started with the STA UHD Producer Plugin video tutorial series. The UHD Producer Plugin, made by Sonic Tier Audio, is a new panning plugin that allows for flexible panning and monitoring of immersive formats that Pro Tools doesn't directly support. These new immersive audio formats come with their own set of setup and monitoring challenges. In this video, we'll take a look at how to set up a monitoring environment that supports multiple formats using the STA UHD Producer plugin and Pro Tools I.O. setup window. Now, when it comes to multi-channel monitoring, there are two ways that you can go. One approach is to have distinct speaker setups for each format. You sometimes see this in studios that do double duty with music and post-production with dedicated stereo and 5.1 speaker setups. While there are some valid arguments for going this way, there's no denying that this can get quite costly and in some spaces, logistically impractical. Given all the new immersive formats that we have to choose from these days, perhaps a better option is to use the same speakers in a variety of configurations. The idea here is to have speakers serve the same roles in a number of different setups. For example, the left speaker in a 5.1 setup would be the same speaker for a left channel of a 10.2 setup. This might be a bit more complicated to configure, but it really pays off with more flexibility during the production phase when it really counts. Let's set up a scenario. Let's say that I've got a speaker setup that can support all the way to 10.2 and all of the formats that the STA UHD producer plugin supports. I have my speaker output set up this way, though you could set up things any way that you like. Output number one is left, two is center, three is right, four is left surround side, five is right surround side, Six is left surround rear, seven is right surround rear, eight is LFE number one, nine is left front height, 10 is right front height, 11 is left rear height, 12 is center rear height, 13 is right rear height, and finally, 14 is LFE number two. Now, because of the channel limitations of a 7.1 bus and due to the reserve channels within the STA UHD producer plugin for binaural monitoring, which is something we'll talk about in the fifth tutorial in this series, we'll need to address 10.2 output setups as a separate matter. Let's start with setups for all formats except 10.2. As you learned in the second video in this series, the SDA UHD producer plugin utilizes two 7.1 buses in order to enable output formats that Pro Tools doesn't normally support. Let's think of the first 7.1 bus as one that we could use not only for use with the STA UHD producer plugin, but also for traditional stereo 5.1 and 7.1 production using Pro Tools own built-in panners. The first thing you'll want to do is to create a new 7.1 path in Pro Tools, but there's a decision you'll need to make, which is the channel order that you want to use. Let's stick with the Pro Tools default, which is the film channel order. Once you create your output path in the output tab of the IO setup window, you'll see that you have an interface bus that is named after the output path. Now let's create some commonly used subpaths, a stereo subpath, a 5.1 subpath, and perhaps a dedicated LFE subpath for convenient use with Pro Tools own panners. Now we'll create a 7.1 subpath of the 7.1 bus just for naming convenience, which we'll name STA outputs one through eight. This will make more sense soon. Now let's create another 7.1 path and name it STA Outputs 9 through 16, non 10.2. If you'll refer to the initial channel mapping we discussed earlier, you'll see how the channels of that output path map to the physical outputs of my studio. So in this case, the first channel of the second 7.1 bus, labeled as a left channel, would be mapped to the left height channel based upon my choice of output orders. In the second tutorial of this series, we talked about the way that the matrix assignment grid works. The y-axis is the channel order going into the STA summing engine, and the x-axis is the order of the channels feeding the 7.1 buses you've just created. The output numbers correspond to the two buses that you've created in a linear order. For example, the output number one of the STA summing engine corresponds to the first channel of the first 7.1 bus, and output number nine of the STA summing engine corresponds to the first channel of the second 7.1 bus also labeled as a left channel. During this next phase, it's important to always bear in mind the different paths you've created, how they take signal from the STA summing engine, and the different channels to which they output. Let's take one last look before we proceed. Let's start out with something simple, a stereo setup. If you take a look at the channel order that we've chosen, left and right are the first and third channels of the first 7.1 bus, so we'll just assign these two channels accordingly. 
Just to make everything nice and neat, I can click on the channels that I won't be using to remove the assignments entirely, but that's more of an option for the fastidious. Once I have everything the way I like it, I'll click the Save button in the plugin window to save the setup. I'll name the setup for the format that we're working with, but you can name things any way that you like. It's recommended that you do not save your settings in the Pro Tools Presets menu, as this will not only recall mixer settings, but also pan information. Now taking this same logic forward, I'll set up the other formats. In the interest of time, I'll let you pause this video anytime you like to see how I've assigned channel outputs and how they correspond to the different Pro Tools buses and output paths. Here's 5.1 and 7.1, 9.1, and finally 11.1. Since we'll need to create another I.O. setup for 10.2, let's save this I.O. setup and let's create another one for use when producing for a 10.2 output format. Now, the thing that makes it necessary for us to treat 10.2 outputs differently from the other formats is that the final three channels in the STA summing engine output are reserved for binaural headphone monitoring, which means that we really only have the first 13 outputs to use for multi-channel monitoring. This is pretty easily fixed by adjusting the output assignments for that second 7.1 bus. In my case, the easiest way to go is to move the channel assignment for the right side surround on the second bus from output number 13 to output number 14. Since 10.2 setups don't use a right rear height channel, this is no problem. Now this might look a little confusing at first, but all I'm really doing is rearranging the output of the STA summing engine. Instead of the 13th channel of the STA output going to the right rear height channel, it's now going to the second LFE channel. I'll make sure to save this as a special IO setup that I'll need to use whenever I'm producing for a 10.2 output format. Once we have that done, the remaining steps are the same as the other setups. Here's the matrix setup that I've used to fit my output paths for a 10.2 output format. Left is output one, center is two, right is output three, left side surround is four, right side surround is five, left rear surround is six, right rear surround is output seven, LFE number one is output eight, left front height is output nine, right front height is output 10, center rear height is output 12, and LFE two is output 13, which due to the changes that we made in the Pro Tools IO setup, is now going to physical output number 14. Here again, I'll make sure to click the save button in the STA UHD producer plugins mix window to save these assignments. And that takes us to the end of our discussion on setting up a flexible multi-channel monitoring environment using the STA UHD producer plugin. Other videos in this series will look more at depth on how to set up your Pro Tools session, different features, and even some tips and tricks. To learn more, visit sonictieredu.com learning.